Welcome to the castle everybody. This is Nightsaber Z42 and this is Character Vault where I go through the whole character creation process for different systems. And today we're going to be taking a look at Root the Role Playing Game, or at least the core rule book, a game of woodland adventures. So just to kind of start this video off real quick, this is another Powered by the Apocalypse Engine game. So if you've played through any of those games, they're kind of sort of similar to each other. Although I feel like Root kind of stands out a little bit differently from Monsters of the Week or Masks. So there's only really a couple things that you need in order to create a character. And really that's your playbook, which I have right here. But what are the different playbooks? Well, let's take a look at that. There's actually nine different playbooks to choose from. Remember, you can only have one in your entire group, so choose wisely. First, we have the Adventurer. You are a peaceful, diplomatic vagabond, making allies from those you aid, perhaps toppling greater powers by forging strong bonds with others. Then we have the Arbiter. You are a powerful, obstinate vagabond, serving as somewhere between a mercenary and a protector, perhaps taking sides too easily in the greater conflict between the factions. Then we have the Harrier. You are a quick, enterprising vagabond, racing easily from building to building and clearing to clearing without anything stopping you, perhaps finding yourself in places others would rather keep secret or hidden. We have the Ranger. You are a capable, stealthy vagabond, centered on the forests that fill the woodland between the clearings, more interested in the wilds than in the company of other woodland denizens or their society. We have the Ronin. You are a skilled, willful vagabond, formerly a servant of a lord in a different land, now masterless. You came to the woodland to live as a free vagabond. We have the Scoundrel. You are a lucky, dangerous vagabond, acting more as destroyer and troublemaker than anything else, perhaps creating chaos and destruction for its own sake. We have the Thief. You are a cunning, criminal vagabond, capable of stealing even the most well-guarded treasures, perhaps committed to crime and theft for its own sake. We have the Tinker. You are an adept, clever vagabond, interested in mechanisms and craftsmanship, perhaps possessed of ideas that separate you from those around you. And last but not least, we have the Vagrant. You are a charming survivor vagabond, using words to get out of dangerous situations, perhaps even setting possible predators upon each other to keep them away from yourself. Now I've gone ahead and already printed out my playbook, and today we'll be creating a character with the Scoundrel. I've already given him a name. His name is uh, Foxy McFoxerson, although his real name is Nicholas Flannel. And, well, we have some things that we need to decide. First is our species, which doesn't really have any relevance or mechanics into the game, but we are going to choose to be a fox, as you could probably have guessed. We are a he. We are... Um, I would say that we're probably suspicious. Um, we're kind of awkward and weird. And I want to say that we have the full face mask, although we're not going to really make use of it. So maybe we have a uh, lighter, a mouse steel spark lighter. I think that would, be, would probably be best. That way we can set things on fire easily. And of course, we are shifting. So where do we call home? Well, I think for Foxy, we're going to call the forest our home. I'm kind of thinking like raised by wolves kind of a deal where he was maybe left in the forest as a youngling and he that's kind of where he grew up amongst the wild. So why are you a vagabond? I am on the run for a destructive crime. I think that one probably fits best, but the other options are I seek vengeance for my suffering. I wish to defeat a faction. I am mistrusted by other denizens. I want to be free from society's bonds. I kind of like the idea that we're always on the run from some stupid but also serious crime that we've committed. That involves arson, me of course. Whom have you left behind? Um, really it's who left us behind, but we're gonna go ahead and say our family. Which faction have you served? Mark two prestige for appropriate groups. Now. The interesting thing about Root is that it's based off of the board game of the same name. And in that game, 
you have different factions that you play as. So the different factions that we have, of course, are the Eerie Dynasties, which are pretty much birds. We have the Marquisat, which are cats, or the Marquisat de Cat, which are the cats. And then we have the Woodland Alliance, which are rebels trying to uh, free all of the other settlements from either the Eerie or the, uh, the Marquisat. And of course, Root has like a ton of different expansions and different factions that come up on those as well. And there is another book that I'm aware of, The Travelers and Outsiders, which adds more factions and things like that. And then of course we have the Denizens who aren't really a faction, they're just ordinary citizens trying to live their lives. So I think we're going to have the Woodland Alliance as our faction that we've kind of helped out the most, probably by accident, if anything. And then we have which, with which faction have you earned a special enmity? We're going to mark one notoriety for appropriate, for appropriate group. And I think the Eerie Dynasty is going to be the one. And there we go. And of course, our reputation can come into play as we interact with said uh, factions and try to ask things of those factions and things like that. And of course, the entire group kind of has some sort of a reputation as well. So what are our drives? Well, we have four to choose from. We have chaos, advance when you topple a tyrannical or dangerously overbearing figure or order. We have thrills, advance when you escape from certain death or incarceration. We have crime, advance when you illicitly score a significant prize or pull off an illegal caper against impressive odds. And then we have infamy. Advance when you decrease your reputation with any faction. The two that really speak out to Foxy McFoxerson is going to be Chaos and Infamy. I think those kind of go well with each other too, because when you topple a tyrannical overlord, you're obviously going to gain some sort of a notoriety with said faction. So, hey, it goes well with each other. What about our nature? Okay, there's two to choose from here. We have Arsonist. Clear your exhaustion track when you use needlessly destructive or damaging methods to solve a problem. And then we have combative. Clear your exhaustion track when you try to start a fight against overwhelming opposition. Without a doubt, we're going to be an arsonist. We do get to establish some connections, but these are best done with the group because you're going to specifically name a character in your party to be a friend and a partner. So let's move on to the second page. First off, we have our stats. Hooray! Now, the cool thing about Root that I really do like is that the stats are already preset. Now, we do get to add plus one to a stat of our choice, but we cannot go above plus two. So, for stats for Foxy, we're going to have plus one charm, we'll have the minus one cunning, we'll have the plus zero finesse, but I'm going to go ahead and add the plus one to that stat making it a plus one. Our main stat is luck, which is a plus two, and then might is plus zero. And then underneath that, we could mark injury, exhaustion, and depletion. We also start with three roguish feats. Now, a roguish feat is a basic move that all of the vagabonds in root can actually use, and a vagabond is actually the PCs. So let's take a look at the basic moves for Root. There are eight basic moves in Root, um, plus one towards the end, which I don't know if they classify that as a basic move or not. But we have Attempt a Roguish Feat. When you attempt a roguish feat, you are skilled in, say, your goal and roll with finesse. On a hit, you achieve your goal. On a seven through nine, mark exhaustion or one risk of your feat, GM's choice, comes to bear. When you attempt a roguish feat you are not skilled in, you are trusting fate, which is a different uh, move that you can make. Now, the cool thing about roguish feats are there are several different categories or different moves or different actual feats or skills. So we have acrobatics, we have blindside, counterfeit, disabled device, hide, pick lock, pickpocket, sleight of hand, and sneak. And I believe Foxy is going to start with acrobatics, hide, and sneak. So 
Actually, pretty nice choice for that. Then we have figure someone out. When you try to figure someone out, roll with charm. On a 10 plus, hold three. On a seven through nine, hold one. While interacting with them, spend your hold one for one to ask their player a question. Is your character telling the truth? What is your character really feeling? What does your character intend to do? What does your character wish I'd do? And how could I get your character to, and then fill in the blank. Then we have persuade an NPC. And this is specifically for NPCs, whereas in the other books that I've reviewed, uh, there would always be a little blurb for NPCs and then for PCs. So when you persuade an NPC with promises or threats, roll with charm. On a 10+, plus, they see things your way, provided you have given them a strong motive or a reasonable bribe. On a 7-9, through nine, they aren't sure. The GM will tell you what you need to do to sway them. Then we have read a tense situation. When you read a tense situation, roll with cunning. On a 7-9, through nine, ask 1. On a 10 plus, ask three. Take plus one when acting on the answers. What's my best way out, in, or through? Who or what is the biggest threat? Who or what is most vulnerable to me? What should I be on the lookout for? And who is in control here? Then we have trick an NPC. When you trick an NPC to get what you want, roll with cunning. On a hit, they take the bait and do what you want. On a 7 through 9, they can instead choose one. They hesitate. You shake their confidence or weaken their morale. They stumble. You gain a critical opportunity. Or they overreact. Take plus one forward against them. We have trust fate. When you trust fate to get through trouble, roll with luck. On a hit, you scrape by or barrel through. The GM will tell you what it costs you. On a 10 plus, fortune favors the bold. Your panache also earns you a fleeting opportunity. We have wreck something. When you wreck something, roll with might. On a hit, you seriously break it. It can't be used again until it's repaired. On a 7 through 9, you're imprecise and dangerous. You cause collateral damage, attract attention, or end up in a bad spot, the GM's choice. Then we have help or interfere. When you help or interfere with another vagabond, Mark Exhaustion to add plus one or minus two to their roll after rolling. Mark Exhaustion again to select one of the following. Conceal your help or interference. Create an opportunity or obstacle. And then we have Plead with a PC. When you plead with a PC to go along with you, they clear one exhaustion if they agree to what you've proposed. You may use this move only once per session. And I don't really know if this is a basic move or not, but it is in the actual section on basic moves. There are other basic moves that all Vagabonds have, like some weapon moves, which are combat specific moves, and things like that. Of course, we're not going to go through all of those because instead, we only get to really choose one of those, and it's gonna be one of the ones in bold. So we have things like Confuse Senses, Improvise, Quick shot and vicious strike. And we're gonna go with improvise because that sounds exactly like something Foxy McFoxerson will do. Now, just like with all of the other playbooks, there are specific moves that you can actually take. Now, the scoundrel's actually gonna start with three. So we have things like the arsonist. When you wreck something with flagrantly dangerous means, explosives or uncontrolled flame, roll with luck instead of might. We have create to destroy. When you use available materials to rig up a dangerous device, roll with finesse. On a hit, you cobble together something that will do what you want one time. On a 10+, plus, choose one. On a 7-9, through nine, choose two. The device is more dangerous than intended, larger or more unwieldy than intended, more temperamental and fragile than intended. On a miss, you need some vital component to finish it. The GM will tell you what. We have It's a Distraction. You gain a roguish feat blindside. It does not count against your limit. When you attempt a roguish feat to blindside someone while they are distracted by environmental damage, such as a raging fire, an oncoming flood, roll with luck instead of cunning. We have Daredevil. You're at your luckiest when you go into danger without hesitation. When you dive into a dangerous situation without forethought or planning, treat yourself as having luck armor with one box of wear. Remember, armor is only destroyed when you would mark another box of wear 
and all his boxes are full. The luck armor automatically goes away once the danger has passed and the next time you would have luck armor. You gain it as if it was brand new with clear boxes. Then we have danger mask. You have a mask or outfit you wear when you go about your most destructive work. More of a calling card, an identifier of the real you than a disguise. Treat it as a piece of equipment with two boxes of wear. While you have your mask on, any notoriety you gain is doubled. Any prestige you gain is halved. And take plus one to trust fate and all scoundrel playbook moves. If your mask is ever taken from you, mark exhaustion. If your mask is ever destroyed, mark four exhaustion. If your mask is destroyed, you can make a new mask when time passes. And then last but not least, better lucky than good. When you use a weapon move, basic or skilled, mark exhaustion to roll with luck instead of the listed stat. I'm definitely going to be taking arsonist, create to destroy, and danger mask. So the last thing that we can do is figure out what our equipment is. Now, we have a starting value of eight. So what can we actually do with said starting value? Well, we can actually use that value to buy some stuff. Now, just to kind of get a headway on what some of these values mean, um, value one is like a day's worth of food, decent healing supplies for a non-life-threatening wound, a pouch of coin, a night's rest at an inn. Value two is a very simple dagger, uh, basic tools for farming and smithing or traveling coke. Three to four is like a basic sword or bow, simple leather armor, a shield, a decent wheelbarrow, a week's rest at an inn. Five to six is a decent sword or bow, good leather or chain armor, a wagon cart, two weeks rest at an inn, and then seven through nine or seven through ten is an excellent weapon, good plate armor, a chest laden with gold, an ancient jewel encrusted cup from a ruin, a simple river worthy boat. Now the cool thing about the core rule book is um, you get all of these tags to choose from because you're basically creating your own weapon, right? But they also have negative tags that you can also have the unfortunate luck to imbue your weapons with. But what I really like is the pre-made equipment, or at least for starting our character out. And we're gonna go ahead and take a dagger with a value of five, a load zero, range is intimate or close, a weapon skill tags is parry and vicious strike. And then we also get quick. Mark exhaustion to engage in melee with finesse instead of might, which I think would be a little bit more beneficial for us. And there we have it. Foxy McFoxerson, or as he was born, Nicholas Flannel, is complete. Now all we need is a group to play with so we can get our connections all sorted out and then we will be done with character creation. But that's going to do it for this video. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Give this video a huge thumbs up to support this series and I will see you guys in the next video.